Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be installing the AOTEC Z-Wave Z-Stick 7, which is probably the most well-known and popular Z-Wave coordinator on the market. In my videos, I usually cover protocols such as Zigbee and Bluetooth, along with integrations that use Wi-Fi. However, we have not covered Z-Wave, which is a very popular protocol in America, UK, France, Germany, and is gaining a lot of traction in Australia. In this video, we'll cover why you should use Z-Wave over other protocols, what the advantages and disadvantages are, and why you should pick Z-Wave over the other protocols. Then we'll run you through the process of installing the AOTEC Z-Stick 7 into Home Assistant that is running on a VirtualBox VM. We'll then pair an AOTEC Smart Switch 6, which is a super small switch with surge protection and over voltage protection, along with smart metering. So let's dive on in and see why we should all be using Z-Wave and how to install it. I won't bore you with the history of Z-Wave, but it's fascinating to see the development. Check out the link in the pop-up above if you're interested. So the big question is, why use Z-Wave over Zigbee? Well, there are five main reasons of why you should consider it. First is interference. Z-Wave operates on the 908 megahertz frequency, which is less crowded compared to Zigbee's 2.4 gigahertz frequency. This means Z-Wave is less likely to experience interference from Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices. Second is compatibility. Z-Wave has a higher level of interoperability between devices from different manufacturers. This is because Z-Wave devices must be certified to ensure they work together seamlessly. Third is power consumption. Z-Wave devices generally consume less power compared to Zigbee devices, which can be beneficial for battery operated devices. Although this difference has closed more recently thanks to more efficient chipsets. Fourth is longer range. Z-Wave typically has a longer range per hop of up to 100 meters compared to Zigbee at around 20 meters meaning it can accommodate larger homes or less need for repeaters. And finally, fifth, the stability of the network. Z-Wave networks are known for their stability and reliability, making them a good choice for critical smart home applications. These are some major advantages over Zigbee, but that's not to say that there are not some disadvantages. Zigbee runs on a higher frequency of 2.4 gigahertz, and as such, it can support higher data transfer rates of up to 250 kilobits as opposed to Z-Waves of 40 kilobits. Although these are not sufficient to transfer data such as video, and in general sensors only use very small amounts of data, so this is not a great advantage. Also, Zigbee supports more connected devices. Although most quality coordinators only have a maximum of 200 devices, far short of the 65,000 theoretically available, and which aligns to ATEC supporting 232 connected devices. So you can pretty much ignore this as a disadvantage. I'm going to be installing the AOTEC Z-Stick 7 on a virtual machine running in VirtualBox. First off, you'll need to make sure that you have installed the correct drivers onto your host machine to allow your Z-Stick 7 to be accessible from your VM. The drivers are for the CP210X USB to UART bridge driver and are from Silicon Labs. I'll put a link in the description so you can download and install. Navigate to the driver download page. Select downloads from the menu. Select the appropriate driver for your operating system. In my case, the CP210X Universal Windows driver. Now press save as in the top right hand corner and download to your downloads directory. Open file explorer and navigate to your downloads directory. Right click the file and select extract all. Leave the default location and press extract. Now in the search bar at the bottom of the screen, search for Device Manager and select. Now assuming you don't have the device driver already loaded, your Z67 will show up under Other Devices. If you do have the device driver loaded, the Z67 will show up under Ports. I'll assume you do not have the device driver loaded. Now right click on CP2102N USB to UART Bridge Controller. Select Update Driver. Select Browse My Computer for Drivers. Navigate to your Downloads directory. You only need to select the top level. Press OK. Make sure that Include Subdirectories is ticked. And press Next. The device driver will now install and your Z67 will be discovered. Now press Close. The Z67 will now show up under Ports and can be connected to your VM. 
Now let's connect the Z67 to your VM. I'll assume that your VM is not currently running. Open VirtualBox Manager. Select your VM. Select Settings. Now select USB. Select USB 3, although I have tested with USB 2 and it works fine. Press the plus USB icon to the right of the USB device filters. Select Silicon Lab CP2102N USB to UART bridge controller. Now press OK. Now press Start to start your VM. To confirm that your Z67 has connected to your VM, press the USB icon in the bottom of the screen. You should see a tick next to your Silicon Labs CP2102N, which is your Z67. Now we have the Z67 configured and connected to Home Assistant, we can install the Z-Wave integration and test by adding an AOTech Z-Wave socket. This is one of the best smart sockets I've ever tested. It has integrated surge and overcurrent protection, power metering and best of all, it's super compact form factor. One of the smallest available on the market with these features, making it ideal for when used next to another outlet. Something my TP-Link HS110 smart socket drives me crazy about, as they have a much larger form factor and it cannot be co-located next to another plug. Links to a super quick friendly distributor for the Australian viewers in the description, along with Amazon links for the rest of the world. Now let's add the Z-Wave integration. Open Home Assistant. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services. Press the Add Integration in the bottom right hand corner. Search for and select Z-Wave. Make sure that Use the Z-Wave JS Supervisor add-on is selected. Press Submit. Home Assistant will now set up the integration. Select your Z Stick 7 that will be shown starting with CP2102N. Press Submit. The add-on will start and configure the Z Stick 7. Once completed, the Z67 will show up as a USB controller device. Optionally give it an area and press finish. The Z67 is now configured and ready to add Z-Wave devices. Now let's add the Z-Wave device. Open Home Assistant. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services. Press the Add Integration in the bottom right hand corner. Select Add Z-Wave device. Plug in your Z-Wave device, in my case the AOTech Smart Switch, links in the description. Press the pairing button on the front of the AOTech Smart Switch, which will illuminate an LED green around the socket. Home Assistant will find the AOTech Smart Switch and configure it. This will be signified by a large green tick. Now press close. Now let's see which entities are exposed. Search for Z-Wave. Select the devices. Select the Smart Switch 6. Here you can toggle the power switch and toggle the front LED of the socket. In sensors you have access to the instantaneous power consumption in watts, the current and the voltage, plus the electrical power consumption in watt hours. Moving into the configuration section, only two entities are shown for firmware and ping which is used to identify the device. However pressing the plus 31 entries that are not shown reveals many more configuration controls. Here is a hot tip. The front LED has a control in the control section, however changing this value doesn't result in the LED changing colour or turning off. To enable this, you will need to enable a hidden configuration entity. Scroll down until you find LED indicator and select it. Now press the cog in the top right hand corner. Enable the entity and press update. Home Assistant will take up to 30 seconds to make this entity available. Press OK. Now go and make a coffee and come back to Home Assistant in a while. Now scroll back up to the configuration section and press refresh. The LED indicator entity will have appeared. Use the drop down to reveal the options. On when load is on, off after 5 seconds and night light mode. Select accordingly, but if you want to change the LED color at all times, select night mode. Now scroll back into the control section and select the globe for the smart switch 6. Now not only can you turn on the LED, but you can set to whatever colour you wish. So that's the AOTech Z Stick 7, a solid, reliable, highly compatible Z-Wave coordinator that will give you a quick and simple way into the Z-Wave protocol. With amazing range, robust network, highly configurable and technically far superior than Zigbee and is my choice for the best Z-Wave coordinator, links in the description. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you want access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if I've helped you join the Z-Wave community, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.